an entire country on the brink of being carbon neutral. Costa Rica is an unlikely success story. A peaceful, natural paradise that escaped the wars of Central America. It's now aiming to stop using fossil fuels within six years. There's a real commitment and seeing that from people that work in the industry but also people that live in the environment, they care about their country. They know that it has a value, it has an economic value and they can see people coming to explore the area and they see that as a really good thing. It's early morning at the state power company ICE and they're about to show us how this year they managed to run the country's entire power grid solely on renewable energy for 75 days straight. You see, in this small area of about 60 kilometres, they have plants that are powered entirely by water, by wind, by sun, even by volcanoes. There is so much natural power in such a small area, and they're so proud of it. Elber Hidalgo is spokesman for the state company, which was set up nearly 60 years ago to provide sustainable power. Cuya misión específica era generar energía, garantizar la electricidad a todo el país usando la naturaleza, pero obligándose a proteger la naturaleza para el futuro. Es uno de los primeros países del mundo ejecuta la sostenibilidad ambiental. But you want to be carbon neutral by 2021. That's a big target. Ciertamente, nos sentimos muy orgullosos en Costa Rica de tener un modelo que nos garantiza energía, que es nuestra propia energía, que dependemos muy poco de la importación de hidrocarburos y somos muy eh, condescendientes con nuestra naturaleza y con el cambio climático que afecta al mundo. Not every country is lucky enough to have Costa Rica's natural energy. Right next to the dams and wind farms, a volcano powers this geothermal plant. And there's popular support for going green. Ecotourism is now the biggest source of foreign revenue. Uh, it's pretty clear that Costa Rica isn't just punching above its weight to get emissions down, it's actually rebranding itself as a totally green economy. And for a small country like this, the potential economic benefits are enormous. You can already see that with the increased tourism. Donald Varela Soto and his wife Pip run a small farm and a tourist lodge. I think Costa Rica is one of the, of the few countries in the world who has set standards very high for conservation and the environment. Why do you think little Costa Rica is so determined to do something about this? Why is it so important here? I think it's related to two things. One is having very smart people very long time ago who decided to not just cut everything and be productive in terms of agriculture and development industrial. People that decided that instead of having an army, they wanted to have education and conservation and really good health uh, care system. And um, that over the years, that was empowered by the development of the tourism, the ecotourism in the area. Donald's wife, Pip Kelly, moved here from Australia 14 years ago. This is what the monkeys see when they're up in the trees. Why? Oh, it's incredible. Just the access to natural resources. You know, we're only 800 metres from our house and we're in primary rainforest. Or well, you can feel nature, you can see it every day. Mm -hmm. Do the girls appreciate it? Oh, absolutely. They learn from the first day of school that we have to look after our natural resources. Any butterflies? Are there any birds? Ah! 
it can be quite depressive sometimes looking back at Australia and looking at um, investment in coal and other industries that perhaps aren't very good for our future or even our current generations. And I really hope that people can learn from Costa Rica and other countries that are investing in renewable energies. Costa Rica hopes to be the model other countries can follow in Paris. And the UN diplomat in charge of securing a global agreement is herself a proud Costa Rican. We're incredibly privileged from a climate change perspective because it is a country uh, that does not have any fossil fuel resource base whatsoever. Uh, but we have very, very well endowed with wind and with solar. Science has been very, very clear that 75% uh, percent of the fossil fuel reserves actually need to stay in the ground. And what that means for coal, which is the most, uh, the most uh, carbon intensive, is that no new coal uh, can come on, uh, online if we're going to stay within, uh, within two degrees or under that. And that's why Paris is so important. The UN's climate change negotiations aim to limit global warming to two degrees Celsius above pre-industrial times. That would mean serious changes to the way the world gets its energy.